Well, a very warm welcome to our Mothering Sunday service. It's a real pleasure to, to see you all, whether you're here in church or online. In church, it's lovely to see a few faces that are new to the church. You are very welcome to our service here today. It's also nice to see some people returning after a long absence. It's lovely to have you back. Now, uh, there are a number of things on the notices. Uh, we're starting the Homer Hub, uh, a midweek coffee morning. We're starting on April the 6th. On the notice sheets, there's a list of ways in which you can help. If you're interested in helping, then please do have a word with me or ring the church office. If you want to invite people to the Homer Hub, there are some invitation cards uh, just on the table before you go out of the door when you leave. Uh, on your notes, with your notices today, you are handed a children's society envelope. On Mothering Sunday, we like to give you the opportunity to give uh, towards the work, the splendid work of the children's society. Um, so if you haven't got any money today and want to give, then don't worry. Take the envelope home and bring it back uh, one of the next couple of Sundays and we'll include it in our gift to the children's society. Uh, there are... Uh, details of our Easter services on the poses that we'll be giving out later. Um, particularly draw your attention to on Good Friday, there's a church and chips at 5.30. And on Easter Sunday, we've got all age communion here at 11 o'clock with an Easter egg hunt at the end of that. And then in the afternoon at the Hereford Point Estate at 3 o'clock, there's an Easter extravaganza that... Erin has organised, so that should be really good, so very welcome to those events. The Friendship Group meets tomorrow evening for a meal at the Three Elms Pub. If you're interested in going, then if you could ring Wendy Davidson, her number is on the notices. And I think that's all I need to say by way of notices. We're going, oh, I know what else I need to do. I need to find out how you've all done with Mothering Sunday. So. There are some questions coming. So if you're a mum and you have children, uh, well, no, no, if you're a mum and you have children alive, have you, how many of you have had a car? Or, or some sort of token today? That's good. That's good. A bit worrying up there. Uh, how, how, how many of you have not had a car? So that's um, not yet. There's still time to go, there's still time to go. Do I need their numbers to read them? Yes. <laughs> as, a, as, a, as a family, we have a 33.3% success rate at the moment. Um, so how many of you who are mums and there are other people in the household, how many of you are expecting to cook the meal and to wash up today? How many mums are expecting to cook and wash up to them. <laughs> this is sad. This is very sad. Well, the guys, we're not doing too badly is the answer. For, for those of you watching online, there were very few hands up in that last bit. I'll stop myself spitting on the microphone now. That's lovely. We're going to stand and sing For the Beauty of the Earth, a hymn that celebrates God's goodness, but also separates uh, but also celebrates family life. So let's stand and sing. Oh, yeah. 
please sit down. The Bible says very clearly, it's part of the Ten Commandments, that we should honour our father and, mother, father and mother so that we may live long and happy lives. And for hundreds of years, people have given special gifts to their mothers on Mothering Sunday, and towards the end of this service, we'll be giving out poses of flowers. But first, let's all join together in prayer to our Heavenly Father. We say together, Heavenly Father, in our worship today, make us truly thankful for your love. Help us to sing your praise, confess our sins, hear your word, and bring our prayers to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord God, we come to you in sorrow, for we often fail you and let you down. Lord, forgive us and help us to obey. You have taught us honour your father and mother, that it may go well with you, and so that you may enjoy long life on the earth. We often fail you and let you down. Lord, forgive us and help us to obey. You have taught us as parents, don't treat your children in such a way as to make them angry. Instead, raise them with discipline and instruction. We often fail you and let you down. Lord, forgive us and help us to obey. You have taught us as husbands and wives to show Jesus' love for one another. We often fail you and let you down. Lord, forgive us and help us to obey. You have taught us as a Christian family, your church, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. We often fail you and let you down. Lord, forgive us. Help us to hear your word and to obey. For Jesus' sake, amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal love. And we're going to celebrate God's amazing love to us as we stand to sing this next song, Loved Before the Dawn of Time.
salvation song and our joy the chorus of shine forever, love's unfading splendor, earth and heaven will bow in awe, joining in salvation song. Please sit down. Chris is going to come to read to us in a moment, but I'm just going to uh, start off the sermon and then he's going to read part of the way through. Now, what are some of the things that mums do? Some of the things that make them special? So I'm going to risk this microphone again. No, I'm not. So what are some of the things that mums do that make them special? Any ideas? <laughs> I love the way that you look to your mum. Yes, go on, go for it. Oh, take care of me. They take care of you when you're sick. Yeah. Any other ideas from this road? Keep you up. Keep you up. You've got insurance. Yeah. Yeah. Keep you up. 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 Keep Yes, any, any thoughts? Any, any thoughts here? Any suggestions that can be... What about from... Oh, yes, good. Change nappies. Change nappies, very good. Very good. Barbara. They love us. They love us. Sally. They warn us when we go out and have to cope and get wet that we might not be well. Okay. <laughs> Useful warning. Yes, very, very good on that. Is there, is there anything from on high that you want to say here? <laughs> they read stories, they do. <laughs> That's a really important part. So we've got, yes, Debbie. It's unconditional love. It's unconditional love. It's as though you've read the latter part of the sermon. <laughs> unconditional love, very good. Recently at a funeral, the family wrote this poem to their mum. Thank you for your guidance, all words and sound advice. Thank you for helping us when at times we did fall. Thank you for caring when in sickness and when in health. Thank you for providing a safe and loving home. Thank you for the laughter, the fun times that we all had. Thank you for your kindness in every single act. Thank you for being strong, the woman about the house. Thank you for being there at every beck and call. Thank you for being just you, always honest and forever true. Thank you for loving us from the day that we were born. In a moment, we're going to take a look at these things, but first we're going to have a reading from the Bible. In it, St. Paul talks about how he was like a mother to the new Christians at Thessalonica. Chris. Sorry. So our reading today is from Thessalonians chapter 2, first the first Thessalonians, uh, verse 7 to 10. Thank you. As apostles of Christ, we could have been a burden to you, but we were gentle among you, like a mother caring for her little children. We love you so much that we were delighted to share with you not only the gospel of God, but our lives as well, because you had become so dear to us. Surely you remember, brothers, our toil and a hardship. We worked day and night, or night and day even, in order not to be a burden to anyone. 
while we preach the gospel of God to you. You are witnesses, and so is God, of how holy, righteous, and blameless we were among you who believed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now, originally, Mothering Sunday was a special Sunday in the year. It was a day for people who'd been sent away to work from their homes. And on that day, that special Sunday, they were allowed time off to go back to their home church, their mother church. So really, the mother in Mothering Sunday refers to the church. But in what ways is the church like a mother? Well, mums do lots of practical things for us. Well, the church should be practical, doing things to help others. <coughs> mums give us love and care. Well, again, when we're low or not well, the church should provide strength and comfort. Mums are good to spend time with. Well, the church should provide people with lots of friendship and fun. Mums are always there, even when we've done wrong. And people should always be welcome at church. Mums are often the ones who teach right from wrong. And the church should help us to live, to live the right way. So let's as a church be challenged by this list, by the thought of being a good mother. But actually this is a challenge to all of us, even if we're not mums or even regular church guys. Because what, makes, <coughs> sorry, because what truly makes mums so special is that they do lots of things because they love us and want the best for us. I'm just going to take a drink again. <coughs> As I said, mums do lots of things because they love us and want the best for us. They don't do them because they'd get into trouble if they didn't do them. They don't do them to get a reward. Well, at least the only reward is seeing their children are pleased and happy. Mum do, mums do things out of love. And we all need to love, to love like that. And we need to know more deeply that we are loved in that way by God. Some of us have the joy of our mums still being alive. Many of us, sadly, our mums have died. But we have God who loves us in an unconditional way. Let me tell you a short story. Jason was very happy. It was his birthday and his present was a pet of his very own, a beautiful black and brown puppy. His parents made him promise to look after it, which is a big promise, because a dog can live to be 15 or even 20 years old. Jason's mum also made him promise to train his dog, because she was worried about the new carpet on the stairs. She could see those sharp puppy teeth could not only make a mess of the carpet, but also the chair legs in the lounge. Well, a few days after his birthday, Jason started to train his dog, which he called Patch. Here, Patch, sit, sit, lie down, beg, and so on. And to his dismay, Patch didn't really care what Jason said, even when Jason shouted. He just went on doing whatever he wanted to do. After two weeks, Jason had an idea. He went to the pet shop with his pocket money and bought a bag of doggy chocks. Every time Patch did as he was told, Jason gave him a doggy chock. It was great, instant obedience, until the doggy chocks ran out and then it was back to normal. And this got Jason quite upset. You see, he suddenly realised that Patch only did what he was told for what he could get out of it. He became very, very angry with Patch and almost hated him until he thought of something very important. 
Jason realised that people are often just like Patch. They only do things that are right when they have to, or to get something for themselves. But his mum, when he thought about it, wasn't like that. She kept on loving Jason for his sake, not for what she could get out, not for what she could get out of it. Well, are you and I like Patch the dog? At school, do you often do only enough work to keep out of trouble? Or do you only behave when someone is watching you? At home, do you only obey or help out to avoid punishment? Do you only do things round the house if you're promised a reward? Or if it's a special day, like Mother's Day? Or do you do lots of things, often just to please your mum or others, because you love them? And do you do things just because you love God and want to please him? Because God loves us, not so that he can get something from us, but because that's the way he is. He is an incredibly loving God. Amen. God is light. We talk about Jesus, the light of the world. But God also wants us to be light. He wants the light of his love to shine in us. So we're going to stand and sing this little light of mine. And we need the shakers for this. So if you'd like to come to the front to hand out some shakers... I think we've got the percussion set ready now, so let's stand to sing. <laughs> let's have you singing your heart out. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 
take a seat and we'll collect up the shakers and then Chris will lead us in prayer. Just before we pray, a couple of things that chuckled me over my crunching up cornflakes this morning. Which of these did you tell your children? You can put your hands up if you want to. Wash your hands. I want never gets. Don't say what, say pardon. Sit on your chair properly. I don't care who started it. Because I said so. Wait until your father gets home. I've told you once, I've told you a thousand times. I've got eyes in the back of my head. Call me when you arrive so I'm, I know you got there safely. That's a good one, isn't it? Were you born in a barn? Use your knife and fork properly. Don't talk with your mouth full. My wife tells me that, hang on. <laughs> It'll all end in tears. Go and ask your father. I'll give you until the count of three. <laughs> Don't even think about it. One day you'll have children and you'll understand. <laughs> If you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. How can you say you don't like it if you've never tried it? <laughs> That was me and cabbage. <laughs> if you don't eat your crusts, your hair won't go curly. <laughs> <laughs> And that's what much we have. I don't care what Jimmy's parents do, I'm not Jimmy's mum. Or whatever. So yes. Those are good sayings and remind us of what our mother hopefully inbred in us. And so as we come to pray, loving God, we thank you for mums and children, for all the joys of family life. Be with those who are grieving because they have no mother. Be close to those who are struggling because they have no children. Be near to those who are sad because they are far apart from those they love. Let your love be present in every home and help your church to have eyes to see and ears to hear the needs of all who come. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. And Lord, we pray about the horrors of war. For the refugee crisis, Heavenly Father, you are the source of all goodness, generosity and love. We thank you for opening the hearts of many for those who are fleeing for their lives. Help us now to open our arms in welcome and to reach out our hands in support. 
that the desperate may find new hope and lives torn apart be restored. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we think about the sick and the housebound, those who couldn't be with us today, those who are still suffering under the COVID virus. Lord, we ask you to bless our own church family here, Stephen, Erin, Jane, Liz in the office, our church wardens, our bell ringers, our whole church fellowship. Lord, you love and care for each one of us. And as we've been hearing and praying about evangelism, Lord, we just ask you that we may be that comforted hand, that supporting voice and prayer in time of need. May we be your hands, Lord. May we be your feet. Guide us and help us to be in the right place at the right time, guided by your precious Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we think of our children and our, our families, especially at this time. Lord, we just pray that the Easter holiday is coming up, that uh, exams and preparation for the summer term, that you be with each and every one of us from the smallest to the oldest. And we pray for those who've lost loved ones at this time. We pray for those who are suffering. We pray for those who are ill in bed, Lord, at this time. Lord, just hover your healing hand over them right now, we pray. We pray in faith, Lord Jesus, that you might give a special touch, even at this very moment, even at this very hour. And may this light up, little light of mine ever shine today and throughout the world. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. Let's join together in the words that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We're going to stand and sing. Now, thank we all our God. Oh, boy. 
please would you sit down. And if your mum is in church or if you're seeing your mum today, then please come to the front to collect a posy of flowers now. going to give out flowers to all the ladies in church so we've got people to help do that today <laughs> thank you very much indeed we're going to have quite a lot of flowers left over so if you're seeing uh, people today or you have neighbours and you think they would appreciate a gift of flowers then please do take them flowers uh, and give them As you can see, we're putting flowers by the back of church. So as you leave, if you, if you know that you can make use of them today, please do so. So we're going to join together now in this prayer. Thank you, God, for the love of our mothers. Thank you, God, for their care and concern. Thank you, God, for the joys they've shared with us. Thank you, God, for the pains they have borne for us. Thank you, God, for all that they give us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we're going to finish our service by saying together the words of the grace which we'll say to God and to one another with our eyes open. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. 
Amen. I do hope you'll be able to join us over in the church centre for a cuppa. It'd be lovely to have the chance to meet you better and to chat.